W5. An abandoned home, a shady past, a unique opportunity. And I truly feel that every property has its own soul. But before the dream is realized. This was a massive mistake. I'm never going to be all right with this. This will not end right. All hell breaks loose. I don't think you're right about this. I think you're wrong. I need to get this house back. You can't have this house. It should have been torn down. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to Hampton, Nova Scotia, a tiny fishing village where the main attraction is this lighthouse. It hardly seems the place where you'd find a story of mystery, intrigue, and broken dreams. And yet a drama of epic proportions is playing out. It involves a British family who moved here in search of a simpler life. And the nightmare that's unfolded since they purchased a home that's known locally as the haunted Hampton House. <laughs> shores of Nova Scotia's spectacular Bay of Fundy. Hampton is a blink and you miss it kind of place. The lure of this village, the majestic view from the homes and cottages that dot the shoreline. And this house is the crown jewel with its own working lighthouse in the front yard. 2,600 square feet of restored elegance. Four bedrooms, all with ensuite bathrooms, a top grade kitchen, massive gathering space, and a spectacular deck with a million dollar view. I truly feel that every property has its own soul. If this house has a soul, It's a tortured one. For decades, the home sat boarded up, yet fully furnished. Well, people used to always call it the haunted house of Hampton. It may look like a dream house now, but it's embroiled in a legal nightmare. There are 42 government personnel actively working to get us out of this house. Oh yeah, good one. On paper, the house belongs to Ian and Lorna Tenniswood, who sunk hundreds of thousands of dollars into the renovation. Through their company, Killer Construction, they fix up old homes for a living. They moved here from the UK years ago, lured in by the unique heritage homes in Nova Scotia's Annapolis Valley. In Annapolis, it is very picturesque. It's a very isn't it? attractive you know, town, and we saw nothing but the opportunity. Yeah. We're surrounded by properties that excited us. Were you developing a name for yourself in the community as somebody who was able to restore old homes? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of our work was fixing other people's messes. They've been hired to work on dozens of homes, even at one point for the former owner of the Hampton House, a house they later bought at auction with a winning bid of just $50,000, an auction that would come back to haunt them. There was no insulation in it. There was no, I mean, it was just riddled with creatures that had got in. It's kind of like when you see the castle up for sale for a dollar, but you've got to right. do millions of dollars. Exactly. I mean, this that. house really, for anybody that didn't really know what they were doing, is just nothing but a great big liability. It should have been torn down. Their plan was to do it up and then sell it. How long did this renovation take? This took around six, seven months. All hands on deck, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These beams are extraordinary. The beams were here, but they were hidden. We had employed between 17 and 20 employees over time. They were racing against the clock, 
trying to get it on the market fast to cash in on the red-hot real estate boom in the summer of 2022. How much did you budget for renovating the house and how much did, it, how much did you think into this place? We budgeted around 250,000 and we sank 600. Yeah. yeah. We shouldn't have done this at all. This was a massive mistake. Does this place feel cursed? Yeah. And we regret it. Cursed because even though the tennis woods have this deed, the Nova Scotia government claims the Hampton House is not theirs. In fact, they aren't even living here. Right, let's go, boys. They come to fill up bottles of drinking water, do their laundry. I think that's a full load, honey. I'm not going to fit any more in. And clean up. Yeah, that room. Really the tennis woods aren't cleaning after themselves. I hate duvet covers. I don't even know how. I... But after short-term rental guests. Oh, has he left us a bottle of wine? What a sweet man. Vacationers who pay to stay at the one-of-a-kind Nova Scotia home with a functioning lighthouse and the Bay of Fundy in the front yard. This is where they now live, nearly an hour away. They call it the cave. There's no running water. And only a generator for electricity. I like to spend my time at the cave, but I don't want to live at it. It's kind of weird. Theo's got a bunk bed, and then with Aidan, because he's over six foot tall, he won't fit in the other bunk bed. So we had to get a blow up mattress, which basically takes up the floor. I don't think it's as spacious as uh, the Hampton House, that's for sure. Hey, you boys! Lunch! Bring your chairs, OK? You plonked? I'm plonked. OK. The reason the tennis woods don't live in the Hampton House is because they're flat out broke. The only way they're surviving financially is to rent it out to vacationers. I mean, how would you describe your finances now? There aren't any. <laughs> there aren't any. We mortgaged our home to fund the renovation of here, which was a huge risk, but we didn't feel was a risk that wasn't going to pay us back. We felt very safe in the knowledge that what we could turn this into would be a gem, and it is. Um, and we thought we knew that money would come back to us. They sold their family home, maxed out their credit cards, took out loans, borrowed money from family, convinced they would recoup it all once their investment property, the Hampton House, sold. We didn't just sink ourselves either. No, we no. sunk my dad into it too. Yeah, 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 we borrowed money from him. Yeah, which we really shouldn't have done in no. hindsight. When the renovation was done in July of 2022, the Tennis Woods listed the house on the market for more than three quarters of a million dollars. We had, from the, from the 600 we dropped into it, so it's 790 valuation, there was still margin there that, you know, would have made it worthwhile. Yeah. And then an unexpected turn. The government of Nova Scotia has put a freeze on the house, barring them from selling it. And it's also asking the courts to return the house to the previous owner, a New York artist named Medi Matten. What are you doing? This is my house. I need to make a, I need to get this house back. You can't have this house. What were they thinking? That I would just lay down and die? I would just let them take my house and just sit here and smile? Maybe you could steal anybody else's house. But once you do it to me, you're gonna have to contend with me. No. You don't have a right to this house. Right. We, we, have we, have, we have the deed. And you in know. your contest of that deed, you question every deed held by every Nova Scotian. There's a possibility that you will lose this house. Oh, yeah, yeah a strong one. 
when we come back. This sounds like a circus. It was a circus. A civil dispute takes a nasty turn. I paid you to fix my house. Now I'm fighting for my house? When W5 continues. The Bay of Fundy has some of the highest and the lowest tides in the world. Overlooking its dramatic coastline, the Hampton House, which dates back to the 1850s. Before the tennis woods gutted it, the house was tied to a mysterious and eccentric couple from New York. This is Harlem, about as far away from Hampton, Nova Scotia, as you can get. But that's exactly what two artists from New York were looking for when they spotted a real estate listing for the idyllic Hampton House in the New York Times in the 1960s. They were the founders of something called the Uranian Philanstry, a group the gossip mill in Nova Scotia was pretty convinced was a cult. Is the Uranian philanthropy a cult? No. We don't proselyze. Nobody's forced to come and, you know, people just contribute what they want. I personally believe that most cults have charismatic leaders that are manipulative, which is not what Richard, Dar, or I ever aspire to be. Mehdi Matten is a New York artist. He runs the Uranian Philanstry, which was founded in 1969 by his mentors, Richard and Dorothea Tyler, who Mehdi calls Dar. Did they have a black magic practice? Definitely not. However, they were enchanted with things that were otherworldly and didn't shy away from them. In the 1960s and 70s, their followers would make pilgrimages to the sleepy community of Hampton, to connect with nature, have wild parties, and even a mass wedding. I pronounce you husband and wife. They were prolific artists. Our sentient beings never be separated from the great happiness. Richard Tyler called himself a reverend and was into Tibetan tattooing. He died in 1983 the Hampton House fell into disrepair. When Dorothea died in 2012, the home landed in the lap of Mehdi Matten. I inherited everything. She was my benefactor. She understood that I would continue the work. The Hampton House was part of the work. I brought all of our community up there. Most of the inner circle has worked on the house. Work that included redoing the roof putting in water and electricity. And then in 2018, he hired Killer Construction, the Tennis Woods, to do even more. How would you describe the relationship that you had with the Tennis Woods at the beginning of your contract together, that they were gonna work on the house and you'd pay them to work on it? Saviors, saviors. I felt that these people were gonna come in and they were gonna bring my house to a new level. I was very happy. What sorts of things were you hired to do to the house for me? It was weird stuff. Weird um, stuff, yeah. What he wanted to do to the home really was a very peculiar idea. Like putting kitchens in the bedrooms. It's never our position to argue, merely to guide and to make as many cost savings as we possibly can. Lorna kept a detailed log and sent weekly updates to Mehdi with receipts and pictures. Mehdi, in turn, would send weekly payments from New York, a total of $82,000 over about five months. The tennis woods also say they let him know when a project was impossible. But with the news on the barn, he, he seemed to, he lost it on that one. Um, when he found out that the barn he wanted saved couldn't be couldn't saved. Couldn't be saved, yeah. yeah. And he went, crazy. He went from cool and collected and immediately completely enraged. I got there and I saw my barn on the ground and I lost it. And I lost it. 
I actually strained my hamstring by kicking the dirt. I was like, why didn't you tell me? And it was explained to him in great detail, photos, we've had emails and phone calls and all the rest of it. So the reaction when he got here to see was, was really quite odd because he knew it had happened. Mehdi refused to pay for the final two weeks of work, a total of about $10,000. And so the tennis woods took Mehdi to small claims court. What should have been a simple case dragged out over two days. Mehdi had become so irate, so angry. Yeah, he was hopping around all over the place. This sounds like a circus. It, it was a circus. Yeah. Yeah. He was screaming, mostly at the judge. I had a breakdown because I knew what, what was happening. I knew that they were, they were making a move on me. And I emotionally got so worked up, I had to leave the courtroom. I was so distraught. The judge ruled in favor of the tennis woods, noting the detailed reports they had sent and noting that if Mehdi didn't keep up with those reports, he did so at his peril. In November of 2019, Mehdi Matten was ordered to pay the money he owed, just over $10,000 plus interest. I'm not cool with that. I don't believe in that decision, right? The decision could have happened. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. And when that decision came down, what was your gut reaction? Oh, relief. Oh, relieved, yeah, yeah. Relief. Yeah. You thought this was over? Yeah. 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 OK, well, now there's a judge the, or a judgment that says, OK, well, you've got to pay the money. So he's going to pay the money. So he's right. going to pay the money. Right. But he didn't. When the judgment comes down that says, Mehdi, you need to pay this $10,500, mm -hmm. why didn't you just pay? I, at that point, I couldn't pay them, like, a lump ten grand. I just, I, I paid them all this money. I, I'd spent all my money trying to fix that house. Seven months after the small claims ruling in June of 2020, the tennis woods hired Windsor, Nova Scotia lawyer Michael McKenzie, who sent Mehdi this letter demanding payment. There was also a warning about not only the Hampton House, but another piece of land Mehdi owned in the area, this 40-acre property. And I basically said that if he did not pay, we would be pursuing remedies, which included sale of land under execution. What exactly is a sale of land under execution? So you have gone to court, um, you have received a judgment from the court, um, and then you've had a year go by with either no payment or not enough payment, and uh, you then have the right to publicly put the property up to the sheriff's office for sale. A sale of land under execution is relatively rare, but is similar to a foreclosure. Mehdi's properties would be sold at auction, and from the proceeds, the tennis woods would be repaid their $10,000 plus interest. Mehdi's response to that email? The offer was, to say the least, absurd. Uh, he owed $10,000. He was offering to come here in the summers and do work for them at $250 a day, or, or he was a painter. Uh, he would sell them his own paintings for 15% off. I mean, it, it was just an absurd offer. And when you get this letter saying, I'm going to offer this, what's going through your mind? We're not going to come to a settlement. You knew. I just said, tell your client thank you, but no thank you. And then a second letter was sent um, via email and mail, just to be safe, um, to say, OK, you haven't paid your judgment, and now this is what happens. And it is explained to him that the sale of land under execution is initiated. The warning in that final letter, there will be no further notice to you prior to us taking this next step. I thought he was going to pay. Why would somebody let their house go up for auction for what is 10 and a half thousand? Emails were sent directly to you saying, if you don't pay this $10,500, we are going to put this house up for auction. I didn't never got those emails. I never got those emails. But whose fault is that, that, that you didn't respond to them or didn't open them? I didn't get them. Call me. You, you're going to take my house from an email? Make a voice registration. Hey, Manny, is this you? Yeah, it's me. Uh, we're going to take your house. Oh, you are? Why? Oh, $10,000. OK, give me a second. Call me. September 2021, almost two years after the small claims court ordered Mehdi to pay the money, 
62 Hampton Wharf Road, and his 40-acre parcel of land went up for auction. At what point did you decide, you know what, maybe we should put an offer in on this house? Maybe we should bid? The night before. Yeah. The night before, our, my dad had come over to visit us and we all, we three of us sat there and talked about it over a glass of wine and decided that maybe we should. And they did. In Nova Scotia, auctions are carried out by the Sheriff's Department. This is the sheet showing the back and forth with one other bidder. The Tennis Woods, under their company name Killer Construction, won at $50,000. Is anybody alive? Does anybody have a pulse here? Does anybody do math? Does the sheriff do math? They, they should take some math classes. $50,000 is a pretty uh, low amount for, for the house and that 40 acres, right? No, it was worth 50000 the amount of money that needed to be poured into this house. Very few people could do. A 10% deposit is supposed to be paid on the day of auction. That would be $5,000. But the sheriff conducting the auction told them it wasn't necessary because of the debt they were owed. Instead, they were told to pay just under $3,000 to cover the cost of the auction and outstanding property taxes. How are you gonna sell a half a million dollar house, put it up for 50 without telling the guy, throw all his stuff out, and then make sure they only pay less than $3,000 for it? No, it's fine. I paid you to fix my house. Now I'm fighting for my house? Oh yeah, they did nothing wrong. Nothing. It's a lot of pain. A lot of pain, a lot of pain, a lot of pain. And I wake up early in the morning with it. Just right here. Every morning I said, wow, I can't believe they did this. I can't believe they got me like this. Coming up. We assumed he knew what he was doing. A fatal flaw in the sale process. Essentially they're saying, take the house away from the tennis woods. Yes. When W5 continues.